That was Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen changing her tune about inflation yesterday, admitting her comments about uh, inflation in October, calling it transitory, were wrong. After President Biden hosted Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell at the White House yesterday, joining us right now is Tennessee Congressman David Kustoff. He is a member of the Financial Services Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for joining the conversation. You knew it. You, you pushed back on the comments about transitory. How did she miss it? You know, I, I'm really disappointed in Janet Yellen because she is much smarter than that. And she she came with other administration officials to advocate for this uh, stimulus, the $1.9 trillion bill in March, for the transportation, the infrastructure bill in November. And she knew the inflationary uh, pressures that would result. Lawrence Summers told her, I, I asked her about that in the committee. And uh, it's almost like she's become a political hack. Well, and I'm sorry to say, to say was that. Was this all politics? I mean, you know, she was the chairman of the Federal Reserve. I mean, she knows the economy. She knows inflation. Was it just politics? She got into the White House and thought she needed to go with this narrative? She's very smart. She's educated, as you said, been chairman of the Federal Reserve. She knew the challenges, and, uh, and she let the administration uh, hacks, those political people in the White House, push her to say those things and to advocate. But in the end, and I'll remind you, on the stimulus back in March of last year, there was not one Republican, not one Republican in the House, not one Republican in the United States Senate, not a Romney, not a nobody, that voted for it. But she did convince those moderate Democrats to vote for it. And, and as a result, we're experiencing the highest inflation that we've seen in 40 years. <laughs> it's, the, it's the description of inflation. Too many dollars chasing too few goods, Sean. You know, I, I, you're right. And I, I think it's interesting. I, I, you, get, you give Janet Yellen a lot of credit. You and I served together on right. financial services. But I remember her at the Fed as, as the chair. And I thought she was a political activist there as well. Oh, you and did? Again, wow. It is, it's, it, this is the, she, I don't think she's making a play to go, how do I, how do I make the economy better? How do I uh, help the people in Tennessee you know, buy groceries and, and be able to afford gas at the gas pump. I think she's an implementer of whatever Joe Biden leftist crew wants, and, sh and she's going to be a player uh, to the nth degree. Yeah, which is, which is a real shame because, to your point, I mean, that's what I hear from my constituents uh, firsthand is the high price of gas and what it costs to, to pay for groceries at the grocery store, how much, how much more expensive things are than they were 18 months and, and two years ago. So these are real-world problems. And we all know practically that the people they vote with their pocketbooks, and this is what this is what's top of mind. Their wages are increasing, but they don't rise anywhere to the level that all these goods and services are. What, what business are you expecting to get done in in the Financial Services Committee or in in the Congress in in this next couple of weeks? Yeah. What I would hope is, uh, from a, from a macro standpoint, that we make the services more readily available to people on the ground who need a more, more banking services, uh, easier ability to, to borrow money. But, but, Maria, that runs contrary to what we all know is that the Fed is going to have to uh, raise rates X number of times to try to combat inflation. So, uh, unfortunately, the seeds were sown with these two big spending bills. And thankfully, thankfully, we didn't pass Build Back Better because that would have levied another $1.75 billion. This, and this is brand new spending when you talk about $1.9 trillion, $1.2 trillion, $1.75 trillion. Unbelievable. It, it, it really is, and, and it adds up. Yeah, it sure does. So you don't see portions of Build Back Better getting through in, in other ways? I think, obviously, Joe Manchin is the big, giant question mark yeah. on all that. But the moderate members that I serve with in the House, they're concerned with it. They see, they see the election just five months down the road. And uh, my sense is, is if they sense that, uh, that it will add to inflation, that they're likely not to vote for, and hopefully Manchin holds his ground. Larry, I want you to jump in here, but, but Congressman, a a answer your thoughts on this. NBC is reporting that Biden is frustrated right now because his staff keeps walking back all of his gaffes, the so-called cleanup campaign. He has told advisors that it undermines him and smothers the authenticity that fueled his rise. Worse, he says it feeds a Republican talking point that he's not fully in command. The White House is denying this report. Support, but what do you think about it? Yeah, I think uh, Biden ha Biden should be frustrated because his poll numbers are in the tank, and that's because people don't feel good about the country. They don't feel good about where we are economically. Mm. They don't feel good about where we are geopolitically. 
Uh, my sense is, I don't know Joe Biden, but the people surrounding him, from the chief of staff on down, they do not serve him very well because they've pushed him, maybe he was always this way, but they've pushed him to the far left. That's not where the country is, and that's not where the solutions are that we need to address our problems. Larry, how do you see it? Well, I just, I'm curious to, to get your take, Congressman, because, you know, we see this here at home, and obviously it's frustrating to see that this is the president of the United States. He does not seem like he's fully in control of himself, certainly not the country. But our adversaries see this version of Joe Biden. Our allies see this version of Joe Biden. What kind of footing does that put us on as the United States of America if this is the commander in chief? Yeah, very poorly. And, and to your point, you know, Biden ran on experience and competence, and he's displayed neither. And you, you go back, Laura, to, to the withdrawal in Af Afghanistan, wherever you stood on that. One thing we can all agree on is it was an absolute disaster. And to your point, our allies around the world paid attention to the way we withdrew, and so did our adversaries. And it made us look much, much weaker. So that's our standing in the world right now. And at this point, and I think the Wall Street Journal editorialized on this, Biden can decide whether he wants to be Jimmy Carter or Harry Truman. That's right. Uh, ran it up, but yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's disappointing. Um, and uh, I wonder, Congressman, uh, the, uh, on your committee, last thing I just wanted to ask about the uh, um, the pressure on banks not to lend to fossil fuel companies. Are you seeing that from, from Congress, from the regulators? Where is that, uh, where is that pressure coming? Really, really from both, and that's a shame because we're seeing legislation uh, on this ESG issue to, uh, to prohibit banks, and, and it, go, it goes beyond, it goes across the board, but it also, to your point, goes with those, with those regulators. And, and the fact of the matter is, you know, your father-in-law was exactly right. He, he appointed some really good men and women as secretaries and deputy secretaries and assistant secretaries, but there's a level of bureaucrat that stays there. Mm. They know they're going to outlast their boss, and they write these rules. Yeah, there you go. Well, I asked Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan about that, and he said, we're not, not going to bank uh, fossil fuel companies. We, we need to do everything uh, all at once. But, Congressman, thanks Joe for coming Brian. in. Great uh, to talk with you. Thank you very we'll, much we'll for having me We'll be watching all the morning. developments. Congressman David Kustoff. We'll be right back. Stay with us.